Hello, I'm Mike Levin, and I'm out walking the dog. It's about 10 a.m. Thursday, August 21st, and uh, in the Gropey project, I had installed the GData libraries last night on the Raspberry Pi running Arch Linux running Python 3 and encountered the fact that GData was not compatible with Python 3, surprisingly. And uh, with the enormous Python bias that used to exist within the halls of Google, uh, it's kind of surprising. Uh, Guido Van Rossum, which used to, who used to be a Google employee, has moved on to Dropbox. Google has produced their own internal language they plan on using for system development in place of Python and in place of Java and in place of C++, and that's the Go language. And uh, there's still a lot of Python fans around, but you can uh, detect the discontent that GData is uh, kind of being left behind. And it's not just updating it for Python 3, it's GData itself, which is not among the um, premiered lineup of APIs for Google. They have this, you know, API kind of dashboard page where they advertise everything, where it's moved over to sort of uh, the, the new login, uh, the OAuth 2 logins, which is a better way to make your apps login, but it's very web browser oriented. OAuth 2 works best when you can sort of uh, dance back and forth between your app and a web browser user interface. Um, the server apps that I'm doing don't necessarily do that and it's definitely way easier to just use old username password style authentication. And that's what I'm going to do on this project because I don't want to add the extra overhead of OAuth 2, and that means somewhere on the server there will be a password written. So I need to deal with that little issue today. Now, one of the ways to mitigate this is to <clears throat> use two-stage authentication that Google has been promoting a lot lately, um, and then get the per-application password uh, given to you. So the password that's being given is not an umbrella password to your entire um, account, but rather one for specific use that can be revoked at any time. A lot like an OAuth 2 token. So that will be our solution. Now if we're putting it on the hard drive and avoiding showing it in the code and not letting it get picked up by the Git repository, it looks like I will be doing a combination of pickling data directly to the hard drive so that I can refer to using a value out of a pickle without ever showing it. That way the code examples will be good. And uh, I'll use the probably the Python uh, live uh, interactive console for performing the pickling. So I get to show that as something new today. And uh, let's see. And then, uh, well, now, now I have GData. And the important thing there is I'm getting up to the point where the outer object that gets iterated through from which one row is grabbed and processed uh, on each iteration, I have kind of homegrown the data structure using Python name value pairs uh, and dictionary objects in a very plain way which I recall is how GData likes it for uh, row inserts. There's kind of two ways to get lists to iterate through from GData. One way is cells, where you go cell by cell, which is a lot of fun. But It's kind of like an old manual typewriter. You got to understand when the carriage return was hit and when you're on a new row. So you got to watch your row uh, value increment to know you're on a new row. The other way, they call it the list feed, which is a little misleading, but it's really the row feed, in which case you get sent a object that's a lot like a Python dictionary, and you make your changes, and then you, you update it back with a Python dictionary, making sure you update all cells, because if you don't, it will blank out the cells that you forgot to give values for. So 
you pull a row down, you push the modified row up in its entirety, and it's a lot less fun to watch Twinkle update in front of you because it updates a row at a time, pop, 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 instead of a cell at a time where you really are watching it progress through your spreadsheet. So, but that's slower, it's a lot more network traffic, and uh, it violates this whole row at a time uh, model that I'm trying to, to make on this version of the system. Um, but the important thing there is that I need to precisely understand the shapes of the objects, um, the APIs of the objects that GData uses, because it's gonna be a lot easier to make the local operation of Gropy that doesn't call for GData work identically to how it works with GData if I'm using the same data structures on my end as GData is on its end. Therein lies the uh, magic of decoupling the two uh, ways of using uh, Gropy. This is a nuanced point. I'm not sure if a lot of people out there really get it, but from the last iteration of the system, which also was public for some time, uh, there was a lot of uh, positive feedback on how easily you could do fairly sophisticated things when you simply were using the spreadsheet as your user interface. It's a fairly controversial bit. It takes you know a few moments to uh, understand and have that aha moment. But one of the tabs in the spreadsheet is a configuration tab. Um, I may end up calling it the global tab uh, to stay consistent with the global object I created. And uh, that is where you define the work you're going to try and do. That's, that's the global uh, parameters on your job. And whenever, and then to trigger off the process, all you need to do is say, go, do it. That's the only extra user interface bit that has to be introduced that isn't already in uh, Google Spreadsheets. And I do that traditionally with a bookmarklet. And that's probably how I'll do it again this time. There's been some questions why I don't use uh, Google App Script for this. And that always is a possibility, but I don't want to create any more dependencies. If I use a bookmarklet, I could still have it optionally connected to Google Docs or still working locally off of the drive. Although there's a little more UI work that would be involved there. But that's the other side of this project, the bookmarklet side of the project. Uh, it's bookmarklet plus UI. And we'll get to that real soon, but today I'll be finishing up the GData bits and making sure it can work in either mode. Thanks for joining me, and uh, talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe.